Okay, so we're going to make a box tonight, and um, I want to explain how this box came about because um, I just I want to tell you guys. I've always said that I get my box ideas from all kinds of sources, like Walmart and all over the whole United States. Anyway, um, I found these awesome boxes at Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning has started carrying fabric. And so I cannot get to Tuesday morning pre-cut fabric. Um, so anyway, I go to Tuesday morning to see if they've got any fabric in. And I always go to the craft section just to kind of check out what they've got. I don't normally buy anything. Um, but I saw these boxes. So $3.99 you get. And the only reason I bought them, I'm not going to use them, is because I wanted to tear it apart and see how to make it. But then when I got it home, the darn thing is bigger than 12 inches. Well, our paper is only 12 inches. So this thing measures 12 and a half. So I had to put my thinking cap on and I had to figure out how to cut this down to size so that it would fit on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Yeah, I did it. So that's what I was doing today, was trying to master this template. Yeah, I did. I'm so proud of myself, because um, I am not that great at math. So anyway, this is how much smaller it is, but you can see it's the exact same box, just in a smaller, smaller size. So enough about that. Um, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that I am giving away some chick candy over on my website. What row? Hmm. Um, I didn't even know that was open. I wonder how that happened. So next Friday, I will draw the winner of the fruit basket bundle. So all you have to do is leave a comment over there on the post where I announced this. So just make sure I post twice today. Uh, once for Facebook Friday and then once for the little box we made yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way and we're going to make the box. And I hope and pray everything turns out right. I got my measurements here. So I'm going to make this box with lemon lime twist. I'm kind of hooked on the Petal Passion Designer Series paper right now. So I figure if I'm in that, if I'm in that mode or mood right now, then I'm just going to run with it. So... We need to cut this down to measure. Let me get my measurements. Um, so ten and a half by seven and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it to measure seven and a quarter first. Oh, and I forgot to say um, hello to everyone that's this is your first time. Well, hello to everyone actually. But if this is your first time, uh, let us know. Leave a comment on the chat box and just say it's your first time. We always like saying welcome and hello to oh, rut row. I got some you know what? I might get another sheet. That's probably coffee. So let's start this again. Seven and a quarter. Is that what I said? Yeah. Seven and a quarter by ten and a half. So we're not wasting much of a full sheet of the Lemon Lime Twist. Um, now we're going to get the Simply Scored Scoring Tool. Oh, you can't get the sound? Oh. Uh, can someone type on the box and tell Cindy to hit... Um, okay, on a Mac, it's Commands R... So on a PC, it's Control R. Ask her to hit Control R. Um, yes, you can use an eight and a half by eleven sheet, Debbie, because I know people want to use. People like to hoard. Did I cut that at the wrong measurement? Goodness gracious, I did. I gotta stop talking, right? Um, I'm trying to multitask. I did cut that at the wrong measurement. Hmm. Third time's a charm. Seven and a quarter. I don't, 
You know what? I think it's my trimmer. It's not me. Okay, so seven and a quarter. By ten and a half. The truth is, I don't use this trimmer very often. I use my old Stampin' Up! guillotine trimmer. Okay. Now, so we've got it on the ten and a half inch side, and we're going to score it at two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. Then we're going to turn it on the seven and a quarter inch side, which I call this the portrait side, and we're going to score it at one and three quarters, four and a quarter, and six and three quarters. There we go. That looks good. Perfect. Okay, now. Thanks, Lucy, for telling her how to do that. Hopefully, it'll work now. Robin, I actually have three of those um, guillotine trimmers. Yeah, I don't know what I'd ever do if they ever stopped working. I wish we'd sell them again. It's one of those items I wish would, would come back. So, I'm just folding it on the score lines. Hi there, to those of you that are arriving. These usually only take me about 30 minutes to get done, so I don't think it's going to take me any longer than that tonight. So for those of you that want to watch um, the Olympics. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got this half inch side right here. So I'm going to turn my cardstock so that I have it exactly in the same position. So on Monday, I will post this template, you know, in my in my uh, PDF PDF format so that way you guys will have it. So we can see we don't want to touch this section, but we do want to trim off this. So I'm going to cut that. Bella, what are you eating over there? And then I'm not going to touch any of that, but I'm just going to angle cut that, okay? So now we're going to work from the right to the left, and I'm going to cut and I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the score line. Okay, so this one's intact, so that means the next one, we're going to trim half of it. and then angle cut it. The next one is completely removed. And then the last one, we're just gonna whack off half of it and then angle cut it. Okay, now that part is done as far as the cutting. Now we need to do some additional scoring. So I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to turn it so that this is the inside of my box because you can look at it. This is the nice lines. So this is the rough side. So that's the inside. And I'm going to make a tick mark at one and a quarter because each, each section measures two and a half inches. So half of two and a half is one and a quarter. And if it's something different, don't tell me because... Maybe it is something different. No, it's one and a quarter. <laughs> so a tick mark in each of these boxes. I was gonna I was gonna try to be funny, but then I'm like, well wait a second. I don't wanna appear to be not very bright, you know? So one and a quarter and one and a quarter. Now, where is my stylus? Well, I'm not going to use my stylus. I'm going to use the thing that I was using for a bone folder. You can use the stylus if you want to. I'm going to use this from the envelope punch board. 
And the reason is because we're going to round the corners here, and our corner rounder corner punch is retired. So I figure if you've got the envelope punch board, then you're going to have this tool and the little corner punch thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my ruler, and I'm going to match it to this corner and to this tick mark. This is not hard. You just want that angle. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to this corner and go to the tick mark. And I'm going to do that in all four sections. I just had to make a box tonight. I was in a box mood. Plus, I don't think I've made one all week. Okay, so for those of you that are just now uh, arriving, that wasn't here at the very beginning, uh, there is Chick Candy posted over on my website. Um, all you got to do is leave a comment to enter to win. And I'll look at comments um, in a little bit. I just wanted to get the, the scoring done. So now I'm just going to fold on those score lines that I just made. Okay. Oh, that's nice, Debbie. Oh, that's awesome. Another little Bella puppy. Uh, sorry, I couldn't resist looking over at the comments. Hi, Lori. Okay, so this is retired, but there's a corner punch in our envelope punch board, so you can use that. Okay. Now, we're going to put our adhesive right here. Okay, so I'm just going to peel the backing up. Fold this over. Okay, so this is actually the top of our box. This is the bottom. So you could put your adhesive on here and close it. If you're going to put something heavy in here, you might want to put adhesive on there. But this is just my sample. So I'm not putting any adhesive, but it fits in there really nicely. Now, where to put our holes? The template, where did I put that thing? Here it is. For this one, they put the holes on the end piece and then the one end from the end. And then when I was looking at it and trying to make the template, yeah, so I did that. But then I think I decided that I don't really like them there because it shows, it shows that seam. I want to show the non-seam side. So, that means I'm going to open this back up. This is my non-seam side. That's my, that may not even be the right word, guys, but that's just what I'm saying. So, I want to hold there and on the side opposite for my ribbon. And that is not where the holes were on this one. I already put my adhesive on there. I would hold it up and compare it for you, but so we would say no and no, and they're going to be on this one and this one, because remember, this is the bottom of the box, so that means this is opposite of it. I hope I'm not confusing y'all. Anyway, so I didn't follow the instructions. Um, okay, let me put this back together. Now, you want to make sure when you're folding this, though, that you um, used your bone folder so that these fold in properly. Because if you don't, then this, this the sides kind of collapse in, if that makes sense. 
Hey, it's a challenge to figure this stuff out, but I was determined. I almost, I almost caved. My sister called about five o'clock and she said, what are you doing? I'm like, it's Friday. What do you think I'm doing? I'm trying to figure out a template for tonight. And she laughed and she's like, this is the same thing every Friday. You're trying to figure out something. I'm like, I know. I knew this would make a really cute box though. Oh, I think it will. Okay, so what is this called? Lemon Lime Twist Mini Striped Ribbon. It's in the Occasions catalog. Okay, now to hold it closed, I'm going to take some of the basic black solid twine and I'm not going to tie a bow because um, I think it might be a little too difficult because it's going to well I could tie it in a knot and then tie it in a bow but I'm not going to I'm just going to tie a knot I think yeah okay I need my paper snips over here. Okay, there's that part. Pretty cute box, right? I like it a lot. I think I might even make one smaller. Because this measures, so I know someone will ask me. So two and a half by two and a half. Yeah, so it's, it's squared. It's two and a half. So whatever would fit in a two and a half by two and a half box. Um, it's a nice size. Now we need to decorate it. So two and a half by two and a half, which means I need to cut my paper to measure uh, a little bit smaller than two and a half. So that means I'm going to cut it to measure two and three eighths. Again, this is Petal Passion, and I'm going to cut four pieces. I think. Let me hold on. Let me hold it up for just a second. Uh, let me double check. So this is the front. Yeah. Oh, isn't that cute? So two and three eighths by two and three eighths. I need four of those. So two, three, and four. So when I was at uh, uh, Rhonda's um, meeting last. Uh, weekend we colored on our paper and I had not done that yet so I'm using the lemon lime twist stamp and write marker and I'm just gonna kind of lightly color some of this because it's kind of fun and it just gives it a little pop of color yeah Move this aside, get the next one. And then I'm going to choose the one I like best for the front of the box. We'll call this quick and dirty coloring. We were using the Stampin' Blends um, and coloring little tiny flowers. I actually colored all of mine. I don't think everybody did, though. Okay. That's done. Now, which one's my most favorite to put on the front? I think this one. So we'll t attach that one first. That's pretty, isn't it? Make sure you put the flowers going up. <laughs> well, I guess they could be upside down if you wanted them to be, but okay, looking pretty good. And uh, I need Whisper White. I've got that here. And I'm going to be using Memento. Hey, by the way, did y'all catch 
Yesterday when I went live for the Fast Fuse, I whipped out the old um, Stays On ink pad and I didn't even catch, I didn't even catch it until today that I used something that we don't even carry anymore. <laughs> oh, well, goodness, that's upside down. I'm going to restamp it again just so I can see what I'm doing. I just got to make sure it's not blurry. It's not. And then I wonder why I have this out. I don't even know. I think I just got it out just in case I need it for something. So I'm going to cut this out with the one and three quarter circle punch. And this is the first time I'm using this on camera. This is the glimmer paper from the Occasions catalog. I'm being very gentle with it because some of y'all know I'm kind of sort of allergic to glitter, <laughs> which is the craziest thing. I just don't have a, I just can't breathe. That's the problem. Okay, so now... And just thinking about it makes my throat lock up. Uh, where's my fast fuse? Huh. Oh, there it is. Okay. Isn't this stuff pretty? And I'm going to take a... Well, wait a second. Nope. I'm going to take basic black and I'm going to cut out a starburst. And I'm going to attach this to the black. Now we're going to take um, a Tutti Fruity adhesive back sequin. And I'm going to place it right about there, but I'm also going to add a rhinestone right in the center so that it's, because it kind of, it kind of, um, this is all blingy, but, and then that's kind of not. So I decided to put a rhinestone in the middle to bring out the bling. Um, and then I'm going to take my Pear Pizzazz Stampin' Blend and just kind of, color it slightly just so it doesn't look so silvery is that a word silvery um yeah so now i'm going to take the dimensionals pretty cute right huh. yeah i like it 